Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can redirect the data that you store in Dynatrace into different buckets so that you can choose how long or short you store each type of data for. So a quick refresh if you're not already familiar. As you send data into Dynatrace, it hits Dynatrace and is processed by Open Pipeline. And then it's stored in buckets. Now the default buckets have a certain storage lifespan or lifetime, uh, but you can create your own buckets and therefore set the storage time of those buckets. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video so that, so that I can show you how to store data for up to 10 years. So let's imagine you're sending in business events. Now, this applies to every type of data, logs, events, business events, metrics, spans, etc. But in this case, we can fetch the biz events and you'll see a field there called dt.openpipeline.pipelines. That is the bucket that these business events are currently stored in. So if you're wondering where things are stored, that's the easiest and quickest way to tell. The next question you probably have is, well, what buckets do I even have available in my system? And you can get that information by uh, a DQL query saying fetch dt.system.buckets. That's going to show you all of the existing buckets, uh, the bucket names and some other metadata. But crucially, for our purposes in this video, uh, it shows the retention days field. That's how long the data in that bucket is going to be stored for. So let's imagine we're sending in business events, but we don't like the fact that they are only stored for 35 days by default, and we want to store them for, say, 10 years. How do we actually achieve that? First, in Dynatrace, we press Ctrl and K and search for settings. And in settings, we need to create a new bucket. So go to Storage Management, and then create your new bucket. Give it a name and a display name. And crucially, a retention period in days. And then finally, select the type of data that you're going to store in this bucket. I'm going to choose biz events. I've already got a bucket, so I'll cancel out of that dialog. And you can see I've got a bucket there called code space tracking biz events. And I'm going to store anything that goes in that bucket for 400 days. So next I need a way to figure out how to redirect the incoming data to the new bucket that I've just created. Again, if I'm in settings and I go to process and contextualize and then open pipeline, I pick my type of data, in this case, business events. And now I can set up my pipeline and it's the pipeline's job to store that data. So I'm going to show you one that I've created previously. It's this, it's this redirect code space tracking biz events in long-term storage. That's what I decided to call it, a nice short catchy name, as I'm sure you'll agree. But you'll notice it's got no other information. It's not actually doing anything. It's not extracting or processing the data in any way, but we could, of course. The only thing this pipeline is doing is deciding to store the data that matches a type of com.dynatrace.devrel.handson.codespace.created. Any business event that comes into Dynatrace with that type, we're going to store in this bucket. So I'll save my bucket, and then the final step is to set up a dynamic route. A dynamic route is the gel between everything that's coming into Dynatrace and deciding which open pipeline is going to process those events. So the second piece here is to create a dynamic route, which again just matches the type, the same type we had before, and this one matches and maps that those events to the pipeline. So to recap, incoming data matches a dynamic route. The dynamic route routes that data to a particular pipeline, and the pipeline then stores it in the correct bucket. And then when we say fetch biz events again, you'll notice the same field dt.openpipeline.pipelines is now set correctly. So you can actually prove that the data you're sending in is being correctly stored in the right bucket. Notice no changes were necessary on the ingest side, so all of your ingest scripts stay the same. All you're doing is readjusting the Dynatrace cluster rules. 
So there you are. That's how to redirect different data to different buckets and store things for longer or shorter in Dynatrace, depending on your requirements. I hope this quick tip was useful, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks. Bye.